Hi friends, it's Nicole here with a Magic Picture Changer Fortune Cookie Birthday card featuring new dies from Lawn Fawn paired with some previously released stamps and coordinating dies. This magic picture changer is absolutely incredible. It will change the little picture in your window here from one scene to another. So the possibilities are absolutely endless. So much fun. It's a fantastic um, addition to our interactive card designs. I am using the magic picture changer dies as a guide. That window there, that square window is the only thing you're gonna see. That big frame die you can see on the front there is actually the Magic Picture Changer add-on. What comes in the Magic Picture Changer is that square you can see in the upper left corner of the screen. So there's a couple of different frame options. I'm gonna use the one that covers the entire front, but you could easily just switch that out for the square. One thing about the Magic Picture Changer is that any of the images on either, I call it the front and then like the inside of the Magic Picture Changer. So there's gonna be two panels. They have to be flat. So you can't use the coordinating dies that come with the images. Masking is gonna be your friend here. I am going to mask the fortune cookies from the year eight stamp set. So I'm starting, this is the inside panel. This is what you're gonna see when you pull the tab up on the Magic Picture Changer. You're gonna see the fortune cookie broken with the little fortune that I've just stamped here. You wanna create masks for this. I started with the inside and then I'm gonna build around that with additional fortune cookies. I personally love when the little Magic Picture Changer window is full and then you get a different scene or it looks like the next picture of the scene when you pull the tab up. So I started with the element that's going to be different between the front or the, the first scene and then the second scene. So this, I started with that and then I'm gonna build the other two fortune cookies around this. So this is the broken fortune cookie and then there's gonna be two whole fortune cookies in this window. So let's go ahead and stamp the other side of the fortune cookie and then one of the little Pac-Man looking, um, you can tell I grew up in the 80s, Pac-Man. Uh, it's a fortune cookie, but I guess it could be Pac-Man. Uh, the little, for, the, the uh, full fortune cookie, I guess I wanna say, and then we need to create a mask for that and stamp it again. However, this one is not gonna change from the, the uh, pull tab, so the inside to the outside. So I'm gonna grab my other sheet of paper and go ahead and build the other scene. And then I need to create masks for this, mask this off and stamp the other full fortune cookie. Again, I'm just using that die as a guide. And I forgot to create my mask for this, so I am gonna have to restamp that really quick on some masking paper, trim that out and mask it off. These were very easy images to mask. I am, I, I like masking. It's not my go-to because it's not as quick and easy. However, for these little scenes, it was pretty fast. There's not a ton of masking or detailed masking. So let's stamp the next fortune cookie. And that looks good. I'm just double checking, seeing how my window looks. So that's kind of how it's gonna look like when I open that up. I'm gonna need an additional mask of the full size fortune cookie. If you wanted to ink around these images, I'm gonna color around them with Copics. But if you want to ink around them, create masks for everything and apply distress ink or other types of ink over the top and then you can remove those. I'll go ahead and pop my mask in place. I've left my stamp in my Misty, so it's in exactly the same place. I stamped that and now I need to stamp that third for full fortune cookie because this is gonna be the front of the card. 
before you pull the tab up, before that fortune cookie has been broken open to reveal the birthday fortune. So that's my final one. And then I can remove those and grab faces. One of my favorite things about Lawn Fawn is that so many of the stamp sets have cute little faces that you can customize your stamped images with. So maybe sometimes you feel like using those little whimsical images and other times you don't. I really love that it's an option. You don't have to use them, but they do make for a super fun option for many, many cards. I added a couple faces here, a smiley face and then the little face that looks like it's been crunched because that's the open one. And then we'll stamp that same smiley face for the front panel, but I wanna do a different face on the other two fortune cookies. And I went to just another stamp set for those faces since there were only two in this little teeny tiny year eight stamp set. I went ahead and grabbed another stamp set and that is the Let's Roll stamp set. And I'm gonna be using additional images from this to decorate the front of our magic picture slider frame. So we'll customize our fortune cookies with the faces. And then we can start the coloring of both of these panels. So now is the fun part where you can either color them before or you can color them after you have die cut them. Um, it's just personal preference, whatever uh, makes you feel more comfortable. I think if you were going to ink over your masked images, it would probably be a little bit easier um, before you die cut them. However, I was very anxious to kind of see how it all worked. So I'm gonna die cut mine first and then color them in. Because I'm using Copics, it really worked really easily. I think that this would probably work for quite a few different coloring mediums to be able to color them. So the outside panel piece is the big piece from the magic picture changer over on the left and then the small piece the piece you pull up the inside is that piece on the right and i've die cut both of these look how cute these are so i'm just going to show you really quick before i color them just give a little brief instruction these little tabs pop into each from the front. They pop into the tab for the inside and then you can pull this up and it changes the picture. I think it's really hard to see when it's just black and white images. So I will show you this again when we assemble our magic picture changer. Let's go ahead and color in our images. My fortune cookies are colored with E30, 31, 55, and 57. Both the inside and outside panels are gonna be exactly the same colors. I won't share the coloring process completely for both of these just to help save a little bit of time today. But we're gonna just add in the color. I gradually increased and added more color as I was working on this to get the right depth and dimension. I think they're a little on the light side here, so I wanna go ahead and add a little bit more color. And I even went in and added dot detail once I had the shading exactly the way I wanted it to look to give them a little bit more texture, a little bit more like a fortune cookie. Now, once I have that all done, I will be adding color to the fortune itself and then the background. Let's add in that little dot detail with E55 and even a little E31 if you want to. But I like how this looks. And a little R30 for the cheeks on the fortune cookies. Since they have cute little smiling faces, I think it's fun to add um, those little pink cheeks.
Around the fortune cookies, I am gonna use our 30, 32, and 35. This is gonna give a really pretty peachy pink color and add that nice pop of color to a card that's very neutral, heavy. Um, lots of browns, obviously, for those fortune cookies and things. And then the black panel will be adding around the magic picture changer. Um, so there was a lot of neutrals and I tried to add some pops of color where I could. And this peachy pink background is one of the biggest ones. I'm gonna blend those colors out and this adds color around the images, which instantly adds more interest as well. I am not being super duper careful with my coloring. I'm not going all the way to the edge. It's pretty messy. I just wanna get that color laid down and get it smoothed out around the images. But remember, it's only that teeny square that little teeny tiny square that's actually gonna be shown. So those edges don't have to be super neat. None of that is gonna be seen in the actual magic picture changer. And then why are 30, 31, and 24 are used for the fortune for a little pop of kind of, um, this is a yellow red color combination. That's the what, what the YR stands for. But I like these as yellows. They're not quite as bright and they look really nice with those peachy pinks and also the neutral browns. So let's go ahead and color in our front panel as well. And then we can start putting it all together. So here is our magic picture changer front and inside. And I'm gonna use a bone folder to crease that in half. We're gonna fold those little sides in. These are the track pieces for our magic picture changer. And you kind of start in the middle and work your way out and bend that because they're very, very narrow, only about an eighth of an inch. They work great with the new double-sided lawn fawn tape. And then you wanna put a piece right next to the score line inside on both sides because this isn't actually holding anything in place, these two little sides. It's gonna create the track for the middle piece. And then I'm gonna pull off the backing paper for each of these, fold those down and in. And then I like to use the bone folder to smooth those out. We're gonna insert the inside piece and then each of these little tabs is going to be inserted in the corresponding notches for the inside. So the outside pieces go into those notches on the inside piece and then you can pull the tab up and down to make your pull tab slider work. So I'm gonna open this back up once I have those notches in place and put another piece of 1 8 inch score tape on either side right on top of those little um, guides, pull the backing off and then fold my magic picture slider back in half and secure it. And there is our magic picture slider element for our card all ready to go. Let's go ahead and design our background now. I loved the magic picture slider, but I felt like I needed something else going on in my card. So I grabbed some of the new um, kind of speckled uh, pattern paper from Lawn Fawn. This is part of the 2019 spring release as well. And using those same year eight fortune cookies, I am stamping those around the edges of my card. I actually only had to design the for, the uh, cookies a couple times really, and then I just spun my cardstock around and filled in the edges. The center of the panel doesn't have to have any stamping because we're gonna cover that up with the magic picture changer. I'm gonna color all of these in, even though this is a pattern paper card, or pattern paper, you can color right over it because it's very light. I've die cut a coordinating tab using the magic picture changer tab and I added pull here from the push here Lawn Vaughn stamp set. Now this is what creates or causes the uh, tab so it doesn't go too far down. If you'd push it too far down, it could go all the way out. But this is wider than the little tab there at the top and it just makes, secures it so that it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna center that and I've put a little Lawn Fawn liquid glue there 
and we're going to sandwich the tab in between or the pull slider between that little tab, the front and back of that. And we have our interactive element and we've let everyone know that there is an interactive element to the design. So my background again is pretty neutral. Um, it's the yellow splattered cardstock. I've got all my brown neutral fortune cookies. I wanted a little bit more pop of color. I'm gonna get that by adding these hearts. This heart is from the Let's Roll stamp set that we're gonna be using to finish off our card with some adorable little uh, images of chopsticks and soy sauce and sushi rolls and wasabi. And so I stamped that heart and we're gonna color that in with those same peachy pink colors that we used for the background of our magic picture slider. And that's gonna tie in really nicely that color with our background and it just pulls it out, adds a little bit more color to the design. So we'll use the same R30, 32, and 35 for those hearts. Once we have our background completely colored, and you might notice I added faces to many of the fortune cookies for this as well, just to tie it all together nicely, I need to add a sentiment. We have the inside sentiment, the part you're gonna see when you pull here on the tab, and it will, the fortune cookie reads, you will have a happy birthday. And so I went through my Lawn Fawn stamp sets looking for something that would work with that greeting. And I thought, let's celebrate. You will have a happy birthday. Worked so well, so cute. Complimented the magic picture slider greeting perfectly. And that way there's something when the recipient takes the card out, they're going to automatically see um, the let's celebrate part. And then they see that there's something that they need to do and they can pull that tab to reveal the rest of the greeting. You could even stamp something inside the card if you wanted to. Let's Celebrate is a little bit longer than the Magic Picture Changer uh, frame, add-on frame we're using. This is from the add-on set, the frame here. So I'm going to mask off part of the greeting and stamp the words one on top of another. We're gonna start with the longer word celebrate and get it centered, and then we will center the word let's above that. I'm using a little post-it tape to mask that off, remove the post-it tape, stamp the word, and then go ahead and clean the stamp really good. Make sure it's nice and dry. And then go ahead and center the word let's up above, celebrate, and then do the same thing. We wanna mask off the word celebrate, ink up the word let's, remove the mask, stamp the word, and then we can apply white embossing powder and heat set that, and that's going to make that sentiment really pop on this black cardstock. And don't forget to take a dry paper towel or a dry rag and remove the excess powder from the powder tool we used to keep the embossing powder only on the embossed area so that you don't have that kind of chalkboard effect back behind the sentiment. Now that we have our elements, we're ready to start putting it all together. So the magic picture changer looks kind of messy still at this point. You can see my messy coloring all the way around. You can see um, those little pieces of the inside image on the side sometimes. So I'm gonna put adhesive on the back of my frame and simply replace this over the front and it's automatically going to frame up our magic picture changer perfectly and if there's a little excess hanging off one side, which it looks like there is on this one, I'm just gonna take a nice long pair of shears and trim that off. It's not gonna hurt it. 
And then look at the magic picture changer. Isn't that so much fun? You guys, I just think this is so cool. Very neat and a great interactive element. Okay, I did adhere this panel directly to my background, but I'm gonna tell you that I'm going to remove this with undo adhesive remover and pop it up with foam tape instead. The reason being, and you're gonna see that here in a second, I'm gonna show you the magic picture changer. It's harder to grab that tab if it's not popped up a little bit with just a little foam adhesive. The foam adhesive makes popping or pulling the tab a lot easier. When I tried to pull it without, I kind of bent the tab a little bit or the little pull mechanism. And so I am a really big fan of adhering interactive elements like this, anything that has a pull tab with foam tape. That little bit of dimension makes pulling out those interactive little pull tabs or whatever it is a lot easier. So I thought it was a little hard right here to get that pulled out really well. And so I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. Here's some foam tape now on the back of this. And we will just replace that right on the card front. Not much of a difference except for the recipient and being able to pull this out easier. If you find that your magic picture changer is catching a little bit, use your powder deactivation tool or powder bag and that's gonna help those pieces slide a lot easier. I used that there and I had a much easier time sliding that up. Now we are ready for the finishing details. In this case, our finishing details are gonna be some additional images from the Lawn Fawn Let's Roll stamp set with some chopsticks. We're gonna have a soy sauce jar and then a little piece of sushi with some wasabi. Um, the colors I'm using are shown on the screen. The chopsticks were E30, 31, and 55. Then we've got some reds for the top of the soy sauce jar with R35 and 89. The wasabi is G21, 24, and 28. And then we'll use some warm grays for the rice around the sushi. Very, very light warm grays. I'm just gonna kind of feather that in a little bit. Blend it out with my lighter color. And then I'm gonna go back in and add a little dot detail to make it look and have that look and texture of rice. For the soy sauce, we're going to use E47 and 49. And then I'll use my light warm grays again for the glass part of the jar, just to add in a little shading before taking the coordinating dies and die cutting these pieces to put along that bottom edge of our magic picture changer interactive element on our card. I'm gonna use a little post-it tape to temporarily hold these dies in place as I run them through my die cutting machine. And then I can adhere them. One thing to remember when adhering anything along the bottom edge, you don't want any adhesive to overlap your magic picture changer, the part that moves. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to, to move that element up and down when you pull the tab. So make sure any adhesive stays around on the frame only. And I'm gonna have all of these just kind of hanging out along the bottom edge of my card. We'll start with the soy sauce, then we'll pop our little chopsticks overlapping down below, and then finish with the sushi and wasabi over on the left side of the frame. And I love how these images are from different stamp sets yet work together to really make a fun, interactive birthday card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this magic picture changer tutorial featuring the new dies from Lawn Fawn. 
The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.